Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. In our first story, OP came home to find a new tree in his yard. Let's find out how that happened. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Town randomly planted a tree in our front lawn while we were on vacation. While we were away on vacation this week, the town planted a tree in our front yard. By front yard, I mean our actual front yard, six feet or so from the curb, not in the strip between the curb and sidewalk, but on our home side of the sidewalk. It wasn't something we requested or were notified of in advance. Now, I'm all for trees, but the place they decided to stick it is the absolute worst place for about a half a dozen reasons. The type of tree and eventual size is going to eventually heave our sidewalk. It's under our electric connection. It's the bare minimum distance from our gas slash water slash sewer lines. It's damn close to an existing mature, healthy full tree. We'll be in heavy shade, and if it matures, we'll more than likely cross our and our neighbor's property line. I would have been fine with it in other spaces if given some input, but our property has no lack of mature, healthy trees on it, and it's already hard enough to keep a healthy lawn with the existing shade. Not to mention we've been struggling with lawn health in the area, and I just dropped a few hundred bucks and a lot of hard work this summer doing soil repair, reseeding, and establishing healthy grass that they ripped up. I can find nothing in our town ordinances regarding the town having rights to pop a tree on that portion of my property. Likewise, I haven't been able to find anything at the state or county level. A survey we had done a few years ago does not indicate the space falling within an easement, however it does show other easements. Edit. Turns out towns are not exactly good at keeping track of which trees they planted, so it turned out to be a simple mistake. Yeah, guys, I wouldn't be too happy to find a gift like that in my yard either. And our second story. Fired my boss who spent 10 years at the company. I used to work for an industrial supply company and my boss was undiagnosed, but admittedly bipolar. He was extremely mean and would be very Jekyll and Hyde-like, he used to threaten us, would call our spouses and yell at them about our performance, berate us in front of customers, the list goes on. He once told me that if my five-year plan wasn't helping get him promoted, then I had no place in the company. He openly questioned me as a person, my relationship, and my personal morals since I didn't want to sell faulty equipment. I would have many panic attacks before work, and after three years, I decided that enough was enough. From the very first occurrence, I began documenting everything. When he smashed a candy machine, I took photos. Brought and kept his gun at work, I took photos. Berated a coworker's spouse, I called and got signed copies of the transcription. I basically documented everything so that no one could tell me this wasn't happening and had substantial proof of this hostile work environment. One day, I called our district manager out to lunch. I put the several inch thick manila folder in front of him and informed him that either he fires and replaces our boss or everyone walks out. Given the evidence and after speaking with the other employees, our boss, 10 years in the company, was fired. I've never been more satisfied and proud of myself in my life. Guys, it's all just a great example of how even the smallest power can corrupt some people. And our next story. You want me to tuck my shirt in? Sure, boss. Years ago, I worked at a certain big box pet store with employees in blue shirts and poorly maintained fish tanks. Back then, employees were required to tuck their uniform shirts into their khakis with an exemption for pregnant female employees, which I was at the time of this occurrence. I worked the registers with my untucked shirt with no issues for months while I was prego. When I was about eight months pregnant and just a few weeks shy of going on maternity leave, we got a new manager that was painfully clueless and stupid isn't that always the way? So one day, this manager calls myself and the other main cashier, who was also just as prego as I was, into the office with another manager as a witness to tell us that we are fine cashiers, but our uniforms are lacking. The other cashier and myself are just, hmm? Because we both had our khakis, uniform shirt, and black sneakers. Everything was neat and clean, so we both had no clue what he was talking about. I ask him what he's referring to. He replies that our shirts have to be tucked in. The other cashier and I have both been with the company for a while and we're both super familiar with the uniform policy, 
So she and I both object and let him know that pregnant employees are incorrect and that all employees must tuck their shirts. The other manager that's there acting as a witness chimes in that we are correct, but clueless manager cuts witness manager off and says he knows what the policy is and that previous management was just being lax. They weren't. Pregnant employees were actually exempt. The other cashier and I shrug and leave the office to go tuck our shirts in. Clueless manager left for the day right after talking to us. We tucked our shirts in for sure, but if you aren't familiar with pregnant fashion, you essentially have two options for pants. Option one is using a belly band on your existing pants or using pants with a belly band attached already. A belly band is essentially a very wide elastic strap that goes around the baby bump to hold your pants up, which essentially puts the top edge of your pants at your ribs. Option two is to do the hairband trick, which is to take an elastic hair tie and loop it through the buttonhole of your pants and around the button of the pants. This gives you a few extra inches of waist room in your pants to accommodate the baby bump and also exposing your underwear slash lower abdomen since you cannot zip your fly. Both options look absolutely ridiculous and are meant to be concealed under a shirt, and they only get more ridiculous the more pregnant you are, which we were both heavily pregnant by this time. For those unfamiliar by eight months pregnant, you're basically Violet from Willy Wonka with an internal Oompa Loompa kicking you in the bladder every 20 minutes. So we both emerge, waddle gloriously from the back room where we tucked in our shirts looking absurd. I had my shirt tucked into my belly band just below my boobs and the other cashier had hers tucked into her hairband closed pants below her belly and with her leopard print underwear exposed. Clueless manager was already gone for the day so he was not present to see our magnificent uniform compliance. He wasn't in for another two days so he didn't see our dutiful compliance but all of our customers and co-workers sure did. Our regulars asked why we had our shirts tucked like that, and of course we obliged them and explained that Clueless Manager insisted we tuck our shirts in to comply with the uniform policy. For two full days and part of that first shift after Clueless Manager left for the day, customer complaints to corporate about our treatment rolled in and co-workers called the employee hotline to report Clueless Manager. District Manager is pissed about the whole thing, which we found out on day three. On day three, return of Clueless Manager, he enters the store, sees the other cashier and myself with our beautifully ridiculous uniforms, and asks why we are dressed like that. You told us to tuck our shirts in. He gets red in the face and beelines to the office. He calls us into the office immediately and starts going off on us for not taking the uniform policy seriously. Mid tirade, the district manager arrives furious. She turned to us prego egos and nicely told us to untuck our shirts and head back out onto the floor before turning to clueless manager and going ballistic on him for enforcing something that we pregos were exempt from. Turns out clueless manager ruined district manager's days off because of all the complaints that came in about the two pregnant employees forced by a male manager to show their underwear slash pregnancy attire in public due to an absurd uniform policy. The complaints weren't just about the manager, they were about the company uniform policy as well. The customers didn't know the real policy, and the employee hotline complaints as well. All of these had to be handled by the district manager ASAP because the sheer number of complaints in such a short time meant that the regional manager was breathing down the district manager's neck to resolve the issue. District manager forced an apology to us out of clueless manager and treated us to lunch. We also got our stools to sit on at the register's back. Clueless Manager took our stools away because if you can lean, you can clean. Clueless Manager was sent back to HR training and fired shortly after for another similar violation. I was on maternity leave, so I didn't get to wish him farewell. The fact that he was given training and quite literally told and shown what to do, and he still couldn't do it, really amuses me. It also proves he didn't know how, he just didn't want to. Anyway, well done, OP. I think the clueless manager got exactly what he deserved. And our last story. Got laid off due to suspicious reasons. Got both CEOs fired. I'd been working for this game studio for more than 10 years. A few years ago, it was bought by a group company, but the CEOs kept their independence in leading and decision-making. The bosses were always more or less authoritarian and paternalistic, but the pay was alright and it was really convenient for me because my husband also works there. 
We are, slash were, both very efficient with unique skills for our department, but he's way more appreciated. Be it for being a man, be it for being more diplomatic than me. With the recent advancements in AI, the CEOs rushed to ride the wave of AI-generated game content and ordered us to use stable diffusion for anything and everything and to buy the premium version of ChatGPT with our own money. They told us indirectly that if we didn't follow the orders, we'd be let go. Very illegal here in Europe. They wanted us to use ChatGPT for one hour daily outside of work and report at the meeting the following day. I silently refused to buy ChatGPT, but did ask the HR what would be the consequences of not buying it. He said he didn't know of any. Yet I dug deep into the stable diffusion despite my dislike of using it and made a thorough guide for the others to use. I even shared my findings with one of the bosses who was constantly keeping an eye on us. Meanwhile, the CEOs promoted AI content to the group directors and promised them very high quality and quantity for a reduced amount of working hours. That wasn't really achievable, so they put more and more pressure on the whole team, even making some of the people come to work on Sunday. About a month later, the group company made a poll regarding our satisfaction at work and seeing the answers were anonymous, I shared my discontent with my boss's behavior. Another month passed by and I and two more colleagues from my department got suddenly laid off in the middle of a few very busy projects with nobody to cover for us. I got told the group company ordered the staff reduction due to reduced amount of work. By the end of the day, I had to finish what I'd started. Being in shock, I did, and all my accounts got suspended and deleted. After 10 years, the HR didn't even approach me directly. He first called my husband to tell him the news and asked him to keep it from me. He then basically warned me not to sue and showed concern that the layoff may cause turmoil between me and my husband. WTF. On the next day, CEO One called my husband to ask him whether he's bitter I got laid off because they don't want to lose him and explain to him why I was one of the chosen ones. The group company had apparently showed them the anonymized answers to the poll and scolded them, so the CEO suspected me of being the whistleblower. I found it cumbersome and useless to file a lawsuit or report to the labor inspectorate, but I did use the whistleblower platform of the group company and asked them for the reasons of being laid off while further describing the studio's attitude towards me. I haven't yet received an official answer to my report, but I got the news that last week the CEOs had to unexpectedly cancel their vacations because a group company representative had come to the studio and had them both fired. This was way more than I expected and just made my day. Amazing what decent labor laws can do to protect employees from abuses of power. Good on you, OP. Also, this is just gross since it seems like they spoke to your husband about you like he owns you. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.